So today I've come to Medellin's fishery to talk to you about the power of pellets. I've had my eyes opened in recent weeks or reminded perhaps of how powerful this bait is, how strong it is and how like really little you need to use to get a result. You would think being on a massive lake like this that you'd have to be quite aggressive and feed a lot of bait to get that result but pellets are so strong they've got such a strong draw for fish really it's just about introducing some pellets into your peg and then trying to figure out how best to feed it and how best to catch the fish once they arrive so what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk you through how i'm preparing the bait how i'm getting it ready how i'm doing things just to give myself something a little bit different and then i'm going to look at the feeding and how we can keep catching fish and this what i'm going to do today is i expect to catch like some skimmers maybe some bream but ultimately, um, even if you were fishing for carp or F1s, these same rules that I'm going to show you really do apply. So that's the main thing to take from today. So first of all, at Medellin's, like a lot of fisheries, it's fishery pellets, which is absolutely fine. No problem with that. I'm looking to prepare my pellets in a way, though, just to give myself something a little bit different when I'm fishing. Now, particularly when I'm fishing for silverfish, um, I like to have something quite sweet and bright in my bait, okay? So what I do is I like to prepare all my bait using the bait booster, the Scopex, the Power Scopex bait booster. Now, the other bait boosters don't have any element of dye in them, but the Power Scopex actually has a strong yellow dye in it. So not only is it really sweet, but it also brings your pellets up really yellow. So when I'm talking about the power of pellets, we know how strong and good they are, but obviously on a deep, big water like this, if I can give a vibrancy, a color, and some sweetness to them, I feel like I'm getting all things combined. I'm getting visual effects, smell, and obviously taste. So all those things are gonna be combined to try to get the best out of my pellets. Imagine here with the days fishing, these pegs are relatively tight. They're probably about 12 meters apart. So if everybody's just tapping in a few pellets, if I can give them something slightly different to the fishery pellets, I'm seeing that as an edge. So let's look at how we prepare them first of all. I've got here the fishery micro pellets. They're like a Scretton style micro pellet, nice micro pellet. And what I do is take the power scope X and just put a glug in the middle. And I did this this morning before I left home. So you just put a good glug in the middle. Just get my little washer out there. So look, there's a glug in the pellets itself, like basically all sticky and gooey. And then just soak your pellets up like you normally would. So what I'm doing when I'm fishing with pellets on the pole, I'm actually just making sure the pellets are covered. So if I give that a really good stir, it actually needs a little bit more. Let's put a bit more. So I want the pellets to be completely covered. So I hope you can see in there, look, the water's gone all yellow. The pellets have probably got a one or two mil covering of water in here. There's no more than, than one or two mil covering, but the water's gone a little bit yellow and I will literally just leave them in that tub for you know a couple of hours from basically getting up in the morning till I get here. And this is the result. I fished here literally two or three days ago and I've got several bags of the fishery pellets. Here you can see the pellets have gone a lovely yellow color nicely blown up for feeding so they're really visual and they're going to almost be like a sweet pellet taste which i think is really really important i just love that little edge in the bait that i'm feeding so you can see there they look absolutely fantastic i've also done the same with the four mils so i've got the four mils and i've done exactly the same so we've got a slight yellow tinge to my four mils that are all blown up so i've got two types of pellets that are all ready to go, nice and visual. Obviously, pellets are really strong in flavor and what have you anyway. So I've got something there that's gonna be great for drawing fish into the peg. Now, I like to combine these with a few other things. I've done my um, expander pellets at home. So I've got some pro expanders, which for me are the, are the best expanders going. They're absolutely foolproof. So last night I put some sixes and fours in this tub and I just covered them with water, loads of water, more water than pellets, almost double. And you can see there, look, they've all blown up to an abs absolute tree, really good, nice and durable for hooking, which is very important. And what I do now to, to do these pellets is I literally just drain off the water that's left in the tub for now, 
put the pellets, a few pellets into the tub, and then put a little bit of power scopex on those pellets. Just drizzle a little bit on, and then again, just give it a good stir. And because these pellets are all nice and wet already, they're gonna go yellow in color, they're gonna have that little bit of sweet flavor, but also that just keeps them nice and fresh while I'm fishing. You know, like if you keep them in water, sometimes pellets can go a little bit soggy. Pro Expanders are pretty reliable to be fair, but look, now I'm matching the hatch. I've got a lovely yellow hook pellet, six and four mils, that aren't gonna dry out and let me down because they've got almost like a, a thick glaze in amongst them, if you like. If, if at any point during the day you think, oh, they're not quite right, I always keep the rest in the clip lock tub anyway. Just put a little bit more power scopex on and you're gonna have that same that same pellet. So you can see there, like if you imagine, this is my feed pellets, look. So I'm getting that same yellow style effect on my pellets, which I think is very, very important. It gives, again, it's just about having something that the fish visually see, they can pick out fast. Even if I didn't want to yellow my pellets, I always yellow my hookers just so they can pick it out. But you'll see today with the amounts I'm feeding, I won't be feeding loads of pellets. So having the pellets nice and bright is an extra visual effect. Um, the final thing that I like to have on my bait tray when I'm fishing pellets, and this is a little bit in vogue. For me, I'd have called it, you know, crushed expander, but a bit of crush is what all the kids are calling it these days. And I get it. So effectively, this is crushed pellet. And all I use for that is F1 Original because F1 Original is purely crushed expander with our F1 flavoring added. So I know there that I've got that crushed expander style pellet. And you can just mix this up with a bit of water or if you want to be a little bit clever and you're loving the Power Scopex, drizzle a little bit of Power Scopex into the dry mix and then literally just mix your ground bait up like you normally would. So a bit of water in there and look, you can see you're probably thinking, wow, Lee, you're not mixing a lot of ground bait. I'm not. This is just going to be used as a little attractor throughout the day. And what the Power Scopex does, it makes the ground bait that little bit heavier because it's a thicker liquid. And it also gives it a nice yellow, bright, attractive color and smell. So again, I've just got the same thing. So look, I've got a nice, yellowy style crushed expander pellet that if I want to draw some fish in at any point I can just put a little bit of this in and use its power to draw the fish in and that's that's what today's all about it's almost forgetting that this is a big lake and just just taking everything nice and steady and using these baits to to draw the fish in and bring the fish in so when we start fishing we'll look at how we use these to get the best from our peg So let's have a little talk about how we're going to start the session and this is this is something that isn't new when you're like say f1 fishing in the middle of summer but on a big water like this skimmers and bream involved you would think about putting a lot of bait in but this is what i'm talking about the the power of these baits so literally i'm just going to get three fingers in the crush give it a little squeeze look little nugget there absolutely nothing at all but a nugget that's going to go down break up on the way down bit of scent, bit of smell, attract some fish into the peg. So that's what I'm going to use to attract them. And then I'm just going to take, honestly, like 30 micro pellets, I would guess, maybe, maybe 40, 35, 40 micro pellets, something like that. Not loads at all. And I'm just going to pop those into the pot. So the crush is going to go in and attract, give smell through the water column, um, you know, really sort of help the peg attract some fish. And then I'm going to talk through my rigs and what I would do from then. So I'm just going to pop that in there. Now, what you have to remember is, obviously it's a big water, and especially if it's cool, you don't always find that these fish feed straight away. All right, they're not going to come straight into the bait, if you like, because what tends to happen is they need, you know, they need a little bit of time. So you might, for example, start on a feeder, or you might start 
on a on a ground bait line or something like that short or you might not start on pellets so the, there's two options of now what to do the first one is let's say i chucked a little feeder 20 meters for me as i sat there fishing the feeder maybe when i wound in i might just put another 20 or 30 micros in and scatter them in but probably what i prefer to do is just literally get like eight or nine four mil pellets okay pop them in my catapult and i don't want any bait going past where i'm fishing so i'm going to use my best judgment but i'm also going to bring it even shorter literally like imagining myself feeding it 12 meters and every now and again i'm just going to flick those in there's a little bit of noise there's a little bit of um obviously pellet smell and taste and let's say if i'm having 30 minutes on a feeder i think that's really good because i'm keeping that initial bit of bait just topped up with a bit of noise i might whiz out a little bit of crush from time to time but nothing next to nothing like after 30 minutes i will have fed like that much bait that's how much bait will have gone in in 30 minutes if i'm flicking in a few pellets it's absolutely nothing but these baits are strong the fish will come to them the fish will come and see what's going on and that's why they're so powerful now the alternative is I get here today, sun shining, it's a little bit warmer. Why don't I start on the pole and start on pellets? And I would feed exactly what I've just shown you in the cup. And then I would start fishing and use a cad pot. So on my pole, I've got cad pot here. Just set a little bit back from the tip on this one because I've got a single six. We'll talk about the rigs in a minute. And I'll just literally put 30 or so micros in that pot I hold that up there every time give it a little tap down with my thumb so i can ship it out and then when i go out into the peg turn the pole over touch it on the water give it a little tap and those micros are coming out in the peg now because they're damp and over soaked they don't go down in a club they sort of spread out as they go down in that depth giving me a nice little attractive area in which to catch the fish so that's how i'm going to start today i'm going to start by you've just seen me start the peg but i'm going to talk through the rigs now and then we'll get out there and we'll we'll do some fishing and we'll see what we can do so it's eight foot deep the peg today and when i'm pellet fishing i'm i'm a i'm a big believer you can be a little bit more aggressive with your rigs i know when i fish say on the canal for roach i love a 0 0.6 0 0.5 gram float in this sort of depth i won't be using that here today i've got a 0 0.75 and my other rig is a gram and they're very similar and i'll talk you through the differences so they're both the uh, the power float which has got a thin hollow bristle if i just hold her up there and i've painted that black today because the water's really white so i can just see that nicely 0.75 nice body float nice tie wire and you'll see here i've got a single six elastic i haven't gone too powerful because on this rig this is my ship a fish back rig this is oh what's in the peg is it six ounce skimmers is it pound skimmers i don't know what's going to be there six elastic will cope with everything um and it's just going to be give me a chance to ship some fish back when you're fishing with pellets you need a, a short line between your pole tip and float on even on a big water i've got 12 inches here between pole tip and float I've got two number nines spread out a third points because i'm pellet fishing I want to keep control of the float at all times, react to those little bites. So I've got some back shot there above the float as well. Moving down the rig, and this rig is only on 012, by the way. I'm only silverfish fishing. I don't need a big thick line. And at the bottom of the rig, I've just got like a, a tapered bulk, which is one of my favorite shotting patterns. Number nines, number nines, and then the last two are number tens. So everything's just a little bit lighter and I've got an 010 hook length with the 16 SFL. So you can see there, nice and direct, but still got a nice steady fall. This is get a bite. This is, I want to get a bite. I want to, I want to get bites. I want to get into my rhythm. And then on my second rig, which I'm going to call my, my bagging rig, I've got a nine hollow elastic. So a stronger elastic, the one that I can really start giving them some grief if I need to. Still got that foot of line. But I've got a gram float, a gram power there, a bit heavier. Again, look, you can see my tip X mark. I'm set inch and a half over depth, something like that, just to allow that pellet to grip on the bottom. And then when you move down the rig, it's got a bulk of number eights. 
and the droppers are number nines. And then I've got a 14 SFL to 010. So this is, oh, it's good today. We're gonna start upping it into bagging mode. So two rigs that really are pretty similar. All the line is similar and I can do the same job on both. So they're both good to go. So let's go out there and see if that little bit of feed has drawn anything into the peg. So I can just show you, give you an insight into the, the type of fishing. I'm gonna start with a, a, a four mil. So I'm just going to put a four mil on the expat, uh, on the 16 there. Hold it up. Look at that big, bright yellow pellet hook, well buried in there. Still with the point showing. You imagine that's just going to lie on the bottom, just with a little bit of line. I'm just going to ship out like I would. I probably would have started by now and then gone out for another feed. And I'm just going to put 30 micros in the pot. Give them a little push there, and we're going to ship out. And see what happens I'm, I'm i'm confident i'm confident there should be a few bites it's a nice day there's a lot of fish in this venue and what i'm going to do is that this venue just slopes away from me a little bit so i'm just gonna line up with my far bank marker and pop my bait in the wind's slightly in my face so i'm going to pop my bait in about 12 inches back flick my rig out and obviously with that wind just blowing my pole to float around a little bit. I want to make sure I'm putting that over my bait or once the bait settles, it's it's not rolling down the slope too far away from me. So I'm, I'm hoping we get a few indications straight away. There's a lot of fish in here. You can see my little black tip is really visible there, but look how I've got it nicely dotted down. I don't, oh, a little indication there straight away. A little indication. I'm just, I'm just going to be a little bit more patient. I don't want to I don't want to bump my first fish. I'm going, to, I'm going to try and wait for a more positive sort of go under. There's some little taps and indications there straight away. So it's a good sign for sure. Just going to, like I do with pellet fishing, lifting it up. Lift that yellow pellet up so it's really visual. You can imagine it nice and bright. The fish have seeing it really easily. Oh, a little indication there. Got keen, didn't I? Got keen. Oh, he's had my pellet off. Must be keen. There's loads of fish in. There's loads of fish in. So let's just put another pellet on. So there's no need for me to feed again now. I've just fed. You saw the indications there. They're probably still a little bit chaotic with that bit of ground bait that's going in. The, the thing about ground bait is you can't feed it every time because if you feed it every time, you run the risk of what's happening there. You could actually see the float was just bobbing up and down a little tiny bit which tells me there's lots of fish in my peg. So obviously they, they literally chewed it off there, the, the, the pellet. So look, just allow that all to tighten up. That, I just imagining that yellow pellet, nice and visible, dropping it in amongst the, the fish. Sometimes your bites come, look, look as quick as that. Wow, that was really fast. And again, I've had my pellet robbed again. Oh man, I can't believe it. Can't believe it. I think that's that's a great sign though. The, can you imagine that? Like literally next to no bait. And straight away there's there's, there's indications, there's there's things going on. Do you know what I mean? So I'm really I'm really encouraged by that. I'm not gonna feed again. I don't see the point in feeding again. I'm gonna catch one this time. That little bit of ground bait is has just drawn them in. They're just not quite oh, you tend to find that sometimes it can take a little bit of time for them just to settle down. So let's see if we can get one this time. But yeah, definitely some bites there straight away, which is great to see. I'm really pleased by that. Like I said, I'm not gonna feed just because that seemed a little bit chaotic there. You know, you shouldn't, it takes a lot to pull those pellets off the hook. You know, they, so to me that, that is fish actually attacking the pellet and you know, almost trying to get it off the hook if you like. Sat absolutely perfectly. It's actually towing slightly from left to right here. I fished this peg in a in a recent match, and I fished with ground bait, you know, and and the, the, I'm already seeing a massive difference. You can see there the the fish are on it. You can see they're they're on those pellets. So what I'm going to have to try and do, and this is the this is this is what I'm talking about. This is what this whole piece is about. The the power, the the attractiveness of these baits. What I need to do now is I need to figure out my feeding. 
I need to figure out how I'm going to keep these fish a little bit more settled. Like, what's my next feed going to be? You know, I'm, I'm going to have to obviously keep feeding to keep them there. But at the moment, that they're just going a little bit crazy after that bit of ground bait, I'm saying. So, let's see if we can put an early fish in the net. And you don't want to be waiting too long between feeds. You want to be, you want to be in and out. You want to be trying to build the peg. But you know, look, it's calmed down there now. That that did you see that? There was no indications that time. Like literally, it was just sat there. And I was really confident when that float went under, it was going to be a fish, and it is. So, what a fantastic start to the session. Now I've got a, what's this? Just a little skimmer, I would guess. Yeah, look, a little sort of four six ounce skimmer. Great start to the session that, really good. Just shows how, you know, you can imagine these sort of fish going all crazy down there with that little bit of ground bait. But I'm, now I've got to try and get the feeding right. And I'm, I'm gonna show you a few ways of feeding throughout this session today. So I'm gonna settle in with a method to start. And then once we get settled in, we'll come back and we'll, we'll look at some of the learnings. But for me, to start with, I'm, I'm literally gonna put just going to count them in around about 30. Give it a little touch in my pot there. Plastic's just hanging out a bit, needs a bit of a sort out. That does, I'll sort that in a minute. Just too keen to get back out, that's the trouble. So, in. Pop that little bit of bait in. Let's see if we can get a quicker bite this time. A little bit cleaner, maybe it's just... I was so happy with how that sort of seemed to have settled down. It, they were definitely still just a little bit crazy there from that initial feed. So remember, no ground bait that time, just literally pellets. Oh, another bite straight away. Wow, there's some fish there. Look at this massive lake. There's literally 60, 70 pellets gone into the peg. And there's, there's fish everywhere. Look at that, you can see, look straight away. That's incredible absolutely incredible right i'm gonna settle into this see if i can get it fine-tuned see if i can get this feed in a little bit fine-tuned we'll look at some different ways of feeding it and hopefully we'll put a few more of these fish in the net and we can work out actually how strong the power of pellets really is so the session is um turning quite interesting to be honest caught a few early skimmers really good then it went a bit quiet there's some more smaller skimmers and I can't, I haven't sussed out quite yet how they want the feed because if I feed a few pellets, it seems like good. You can catch a few quickly, but then they soon drift away from you. It's like they want to eat the bait, but not too much of it. So what I'm sort of doing at the moment is every now and again, when I feel like they're drifting off, I'm just putting a little bit of that crush in my pot. So just putting like probably as many pellets as there is crush, I would say something like that. So I'm not, the trouble is when you put the crush in, you then sort of, you, you attract the fish back in. But I always feel like just for that, you know, like when you caught, when you were with me at the start, you get that little period where it's just a little bit, the fish are a little bit crazy. You know, it's almost like they've drifted away. And I mean, I know when I'm ground bait fishing, I like to try and keep the fish pinned to the deck. So I'm almost like a little bit concerned that that ground bait might, bring them away but that's why I think you can only feed it when you when you feel like the fish are going from you so it's almost back to that principle of how you're going to draw them in and then how you're going to catch them and it seems to be working at the moment you know I'm I'm, I'm trying to keep bites coming um, you just got to be a bit careful like I say about getting too many indications after you feed that little bit of ground bait there's a little bit of toe on as well, left to right. And because of that, I'm trying to fish where I envisage the bait to be falling down. So like in my head, if I'm introducing the bait and I can sort of tell there's a bit of skim on the, or toe on the water, left to right, I, I think that, that that must be landing at least sort of two foot to the, the side of where I'm tapping it in. So I'm trying almost speed that process up you can see look nice fish at the moment like those eight ounce style fish not not massive but i think that a time of day has a lot to do with that it's not exactly 
you can't expect to go in and first chuck start catching a bream it, it's not i've never been bream fishing really and that's ever happened you know bream tend to turn on as the day goes on so you know it's 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 more of a case of um just taking what's there at the moment now what i'm going to do this chuck is i'm just going to do the same again i'm actually going to put that little bit of crush back in because i just before you've come it's not been a brilliant run it's been okay so i want to just almost attract a few more fish back into the peg at the moment i'm not sort of i'm not ready to just go back to tapping like 12 pellets but again look at the look at the amounts we're talking about here guys we are talking such small amounts of bait and it and it just shows how strong and, and good they are for fishing but pellets is always a funny bait because it doesn't work all the time either it's one of those baits that you know it's it's when the fish sort of turn onto it and you know from now from march onwards this is the time when they really you know they really start to to tune into these baits and the baits that you've been catching on all winter such as maybe bread or or maggots and casters they just they just don't become anywhere near as effective as what they were not until it warms back up again and then when it gets really warm you can catch on anything you want but i always feel like this is the time when they really are looking for those pellets now i've also found it best to my float's really dotted down now and I, you know because the water's white i can still see it and i'm really concentrating hard to keep it nice and still i'm, I'm going to strike at any little indication because i found that you know in my head those fish are sucking in your bait and barely really moving off so i'm just waiting for any any real indication that's why i think a heavier float is a must because you you've got to be tight to your bait you've got to make sure that your bait to float is all nice and tight and when the fish picks it up you can see it straight away you can see i'm just still wait i'm just waiting for bites a little bit at the moment you know i've had little runs where it's been really really good a little lift and drop seems to help as well but at this moment in time i oh look at that wow <laughs> that is a carp that is so i've just had a carp swimming to my line which again that could be causing a few issues but i could I could be having the carp come into the peg and if carp are coming into the peg then then they'll be disturbing the, the skimmers as well but you might be fishing in a this just goes to show you might be fishing in a in a match and carp count i think this is likelihood is it, it's foul hooked but because of the way the float lifted up but it might not be it might not be so we'll we'll just see it doesn't yeah it was foul hooked i think yeah so there you go. So, but look, that's what happens. Carp are coming into the peg and moving about, and and when that happens, they they're sort of tearing off. But when you're silverfish fishing, you've got to, you've got to ride with that. Don't let it frustrate you. That's why I think you don't want tons of bait in your peg. You just want to catch the carp as they come in. So, I'm going to um, I'm going to feed a little bit of crush again, but I've got to be careful. Maybe that's going to attract too many other fish into the peg. But if it does I'll, i won't hesitate to put a bigger hook and a stronger elastic on my other rig and then i'll you know when you if you hook those carp in the mouth you'll certainly be getting them out as well So really, really interesting session today. It's been it's been very good potting in uh, micros. You can't get carried away for sure. They're not they're not ready for that yet. They're not ready for loads of bait. So I'm just trying to get that right. But what I'm finding is sometimes the peg, peg becomes a little bit unsettled, and I want to keep feeding, but I feel like micros are almost too fine a particle. So I've just been putting like 
20 micros in my pot now. Just eased it down. And I'm sort of like making up the difference by pinging some four mils, like 10 four mils, it's eight four mils, sort of. So something like this, like going out, putting my pellets in, my micros, putting the rig into the peg. So that's obviously allowing those micros to come down. And then almost like following it up as the rig's going down with like a few fours, just like that. Again, just, just probably like a foot short of the float because it's such a steep slope here. Oh, uh, bite straight away. <laughs> and that, that seems to be a really good combination because what I'm noticing is the fish are coming on the drop all the time. So the float is settling and it's almost like if I don't catch a fish within, I don't know, 15 seconds, I have to wait ages then to, to catch one. So I'm sort of counting to about 20. And then if I don't get a, if I don't catch one in sort of 20 seconds, I'm just lifting the rig 18 inches back out of the water and dropping it back in because just like there, you could see the, the bites, they, they come so fast. Like almost as if the fish are just following the bait down all the time. Got him. So I'm sure that and I've also had a few slightly better ones since I've started doing it as well. Almost as if like those tinier ones aren't as interested in those fours. And as a result, I've just had a few better fish. This is one now. So it's definitely made a difference and it shows how it shows how important pellets, you know, feeding pellets can be. Look at that. What a great fish. You know, it really has been a brilliant session and that has changed it for me. You know, those, those stamp of fish, if I can get, a, I mean, I'll probably have five or six of those now. And if you can get those mixed in with what you're catching, straight in the top lip is, absolutely perfectly hooked. In fact, the hook's almost pulled right through there, so. There we go. Look, that sort of fish, that, he's a good pound and a half, something like that. And just by flicking those few four mils, it just seems to have settled my peg down a little bit and just allows me to control both baits. So that's why it's so important to have the ground bait to draw some fish in, some micros to keep them there rooting, and maybe some fours just to change your peg a little bit. And that has been a great example of how powerful these baits can be when you're out on the bank. And just by still using your angling skills, you can definitely get the best out of them.